Hello viewers, coronavirus has turned into a global healthcare issue. People from all over the world are being infected from the virus. Many innocents are dying due to the virus. Today, we have Dr. Hassan Shah at Medicoma to educate us and answer all our questions regarding coronavirus. Thank you. Sir, first question is, what is coronavirus and COVID-19? People often use coronavirus and COVID-19 simultaneously. Are they both same things? So, uh, coronavirus is basically a family of viruses and it's having various types of viruses. These viruses are having crown-shaped appearance, hence we, give, uh, we call them coronavirus. They are having spikes over their surface. Uh, uh, also, the, the second question you asked is that the difference between coronavirus and COVID-19. So, coronavirus is basically a family, whereas COVID-19 is a member of this family. That is the SARS-2 coronavirus. It's a sub-member of this family of coronaviruses. Thank you. Welcome. Can you please share the epidemiology and the history of coronavirus? Okay. The history of coronavirus uh, dates back uh, from two, 2002, where the first epidemic uh, uh, started in China. And in 2002, this epidemic was caused by SARS coronavirus. And the disease was called Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, SARS. And this was a typical type of pneumonia which was having a mortality rate of 9% and this causes a lot of fatalities, most, uh, near 800 to 900 fatalities in the China. The second uh, epidemic was caused in uh, the Saudi Arabia and this was caused by MERS coronavirus and this MERS coronavirus is basically Middle East Respiratory Syndrome and it has a fatality rate of 35% which is too much. Um, the second, the now, nowadays we are having a third epidemic which is now a pandemic and this pandemic is basically uh, caused by SARS-2 coronavirus. SARS-2 coronavirus, it's a type of, it's a bit different from the original SARS coronavirus it is, and it is known as SARS-2 coronavirus and the disease is known as COVID-19, mean coronavirus disease 2019. Thank you. Uh, why is the coronavirus growing so rapidly in the world? Uh, this is a very good question. Why is coronavirus growing so rapidly in the world? To define it, uh, we as uh, uh, medical experts, we are having a quotient and this quotient is known as R0 value. So R0 value of coronavirus ranges somewhat between 2 and 3. What's mean by this? What's the meaning of this? It means that coronavirus is having an R2, R0 value of between 2 and 3 means if I am infected with coronavirus, if I cough, uh, uh, three more people can be infected. If they cough, nine more people can be infected. If they cough or they uh, talk with another person or they communicate with another person, 27 more people can be infected with coronavirus. So it is growing exponentially. That's why this uh, infection is uh, spreading so rapidly. Thank you. Sir, how is coronavirus transmitted? How is coronavirus transmitted? So basically there are two, uh, two routes of transmission of coronavirus. The number one route that is more common route is by the aerosol or respiratory droplet. And these respiratory droplets are when if, uh, a patient of coronavirus uh, uh, communicate with others and he coughs, he talks, uh, this virus forms airborne droplets. If these airborne droplets can go into another person and this other person can also be inf infected by the coronavirus. The second uh, mode of transmission is orofecal route. And what is meant by orofecal route? That if, if a person infected with coronavirus uses washroom, he wash himself and after washing himself, he's not observing proper hand hygiene and he's not washing his hand properly. When he opens the door, he touches the towels, he touches other fomites, so these fomites can also be infected. And if another person that opens the same door, or if another person touches these fomites, these towels, so these other person's hand could also be infected. And if they touch their mouth or their mucosal membrane, so this coronavirus can be transmitted. So basically there are two uh, routes. Number one is orofecal uh, uh, orofic route, and the second one is respiratory air droplets. Thank you. Can you please share the pathogenics of coronavirus? Uh, pathogenesis uh, of coronavirus. It basically means that how is this coronavirus caused? What is the mechanism of ca causation of coronavirus? So first of all, uh, it is transmitted by, um, by this route, by droplet infection. Whenever coronavirus gains entry into your mouth, first of all, it will infect your throat. 
it will infect your upper respiratory tract and you can develop features of upper respiratory tract infection like coryza like rhinorrhea like stuffy nose like blocked nose and you will have a very very painful throat you can also have dry hacking cough so these are initial features a person can also be asymptomatic 90% or 80% of the time the person will be asymptomatic okay now if a person had these upper respiratory tract features he can recover by itself 80 to 90% of the times but what is the danger that if this virus gain entry into your lungs when this virus enters into your lung it reaches the alveoli alveoli are pouch like sacs and these are basically the functional units of your lungs so these alveoli are lined by certain cells and these cells are known as pneumocytes so and these pneumocytes are having receptors known as ace2 receptor angiotensin converting enzyme receptors type 2 so uh, the coronavirus will attach to these receptors in the, in the, on the pneumocytes and then it will gain entry into the pneumocytes where a virus will replicate and it will duplicate its number it will use your machinery your cellular machinery to multiply and when it will multiply there will be a lot of inflammation and as a result of inflammation there will be consolidation of your lungs consolidation of your alveoli and your alveoli will be collapsed your alveoli will collapse a second feature will develop that you will have a lot of inflammatory cells in your alveoli and uh, due to these features and this inflammation person will not be able to breathe properly and and if he's not able to breathe properly so the gases exchange will be uh, uh, decrease and as gases exchange will be decreased so the oxygen concentration in, in the person's blood uh, in the uh, person's blood will decrease and this condition is known as hypoxia or hypoxemia and when a person develop hypoxemia so this oxygen concentration decrease can lead to severe uh, severe um, inflammatory response that is known as SIRS and this can uh, lead to shock concentration and this shock because of a lot of blood exudates will leak outside okay and because of this hypoxemia you can infect uh, uh, other uh, tissues uh, other tissues uh, uh, will be affected and which will be told in complications thank you sir can you please share the complications of coronavirus so uh, taking the story ahead we were, uh, our story was that uh, we had uh, a coronavirus infection in the lungs which causes pneumonia and a lot of inflammation and as a result uh, of this inflammation we are having hypoxemia so the blood concentration of oxygen is decreased and due to which you will have a low perfusion of your vital organs that are kidneys your liver your brain your heart so because of low perfusion of kidney you will have decreased urination and kidney failure because of low perfusion of liver, you will have liver failure. Because of low perfusion of your brain, you will have neurological deficits. Because of low perfusion of your heart, you can also have infarction of your heart. So these are conditions. These are conditions that is that can lead to the death caused by coronavirus. Thank you, sir. How can medical experts diagnose coronavirus when it comes to the diagnosis? Okay. The coronavirus, uh, the diagnosis of coronavirus is basically divided into two types. That is a specific diagnosis and a non-specific diagnosis. So specific diagnosis is done by a certain test known as PCR or uh, nucleic acid amplification test. The non-specific diagnosis of coronavirus can be uh, done by uh, x-rays. And these x-rays are very important because on x-rays you, you can find ground glass appearance. This ground glass appearance is pathognomonic and it can be found in other diseases but nowadays it is pathognomonic for coronavirus uh, this uh, you can also do uh, a CD scan and biopsy uh, not biopsy sorry you get uh, the ultrasound and, this, uh, on a, and on the ultrasound you will see B lines thank you sir there's a lot of discussion going on about the treatment of the patients of coronavirus or the treatment uh, of coronavirus can you please explain that so the treatment of coronavirus, um, sadly, we do not have a drug that can treat coronavirus, basically. We do not have a drug. But a lot of theories suggest that uh, certain antiviral drugs, uh, protease inhibitors, and uh, certain uh, other drugs such as chloroquine phosphate, they are having efficacy uh, against this virus. Um, we can also use uh, uh, paracetamol-like drugs to reduce the symptoms of the coronavirus. We can uh, other, use other anti-inflammatory drugs and to and also to we have to decrease the complication. And to decrease the complication, we have to ventilate the person. 
Thank you. Uh, can you please explain that how can people prevent or the prevention of coronavirus when it comes to transmission? Uh, so dear viewers, it is a very important point and I have to stress on this point that how to prevent coronavirus. In the start of uh, this session, I told you about the R0 value. R0 value which tells us about the degree of spreadability that coronavirus is exponentially spreading from 1 to 3 to 3 to 9 to 9 to 27 and so on. So we have to uh, reduce this and how will we reduce it is self-isolation, is self-quarantine. If we do, uh, if, we, uh, uh, if we stay in our house, we don't go out, so the number of infected person will decrease. And if a person is infected, he should uh, self-quarantine himself. Secondly, if a person is infected, he or she should wear masks. And these surgical masks are having absorbent on the inside of their surface. So when they cough, they, the, the droplets will be absorbed. Uh, the second thing is to ha having proper hand hygiene. Proper hand hygiene is very important because uh, uh, this hand hygiene will prevent from spreading the infection. Uh, second thing is don't shake hands, don't touch the surfaces uh, and use other techniques. So if you are already having crisis of medical, uh, uh, these masks and instruments, who should use the mask in the first place? This is a very important question. Uh, WHO guidelines regarding masks is that masks are only recommended for healthcare workers and those people who are infected by this virus. Why? Because there is a shortage of this, these masks globally and every, if everyone is wearing these masks, so the person who actually need the mask will not have these masks. So uh, only the healthcare workers and the person who are affected should use the masks. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, so now I feel like now it's time to bust some myths, two or three. Has coronavirus anything to do with the temperature and weather conditions? Um, well, people say that uh, there is seasonal variation in pandemics, that they, uh, that at a certain temperature, this coronavirus will die. It is a myth. B uh, there are no scientific theories regarding it because the coronavirus is happily living inside your body and, it's having a, and your body is having a temperature of 37 degrees centigrade. So you have to think about it. People also often uh, talk about using onions and garlic uh, when it comes to treatment of coronavirus or uh, to prevention. Uh, this is an important point I forgot in uh, telling you in prevention that people who are immunosuppressive, people who are critically ill and people who are ha uh, having uh, immunodeficient, they are prone to develop this infection and people who are strong, uh, people who are having strong immune system, they will not develop this infection. So how to boost our immune system? We should use citrus fruits. And what are these citrus fruits? Citrus fruits are basically lemons, the uh, oranges. Uh, these fruits, they can increase your immunity. They can boost your immunity. Secondly, we have to hydrate ourselves. We have to drink a lot of water to boost our immunity. Thirdly, we have to sleep because sleeping also uh, increases our immunity. The last myth is people are often confusing vaccine as something which will treat coronavirus. Do you, can you please explain? Okay, so here I will share you the concept of vaccination. The concept of vaccination is that vaccine is a wonder. Uh, we, whenever uh, we are having an epidemic and whenever the human have controlled an epidemic, it is by vaccination programs. And what is the purpose of these vaccination programs? These vaccination programs, they basically, uh, when you vaccinate a person and you uh, vaccinate a person, this person will develop antibodies against these vaccines. And whenever, if uh, this person is secondly infected by a virus or bacteria, so there, there will be preformed antibodies present in the body of this person. So this person will not be able to in, uh, get the infection. So vaccination is basically meant to prevent a disease, not to treat a disease. Thank you, sir. Um, thanks a lot. And uh, subscribe our channels. And if you like the video, give us a thumbs up. Thank you.